Hi, my name is James Clem. We're talking about parameters. You know, it's those metrics that help define our restorations as they're milled, so they drop right in. We're talking about the proximal contacts. Now, my goal for a proximal contact is to have the restoration come right out of the milling unit. I wash it off, and hopefully I have a sprue on a non-contact zone, and I can pop it right down. I like to just lightly place just a little firm pressure so it pops down. Now, one of the secrets for me with proximal contact consistency on my milled restorations is how I prepare. If you've heard me lecture or have seen some of my other videos at cadstar.tv, I emphasize this one point, and I learned it way back in dental school. I can't overemphasize this. If there's nothing else you get from this video, this is the talking point, and that's this. The, the draw of your prep, we call it the optical draw, needs to have the same draw to the proximal contacts on either side of that prep. So if you have a tooth on the mesial and a tooth on the distal, I want those contacts to draw with my prep from an optical and physical standpoint. That's why in my clinical theater, I often will modify the proximal contacts next door to that prep so I can optimize my clinical theater. And that's all about fundamental restorative dentistry, and particularly with CEREC. And I did this way before CEREC when I used to use labs. And my restorations would come back from the laboratory and they would just pop right down. And I've, I've transferred that and continued that process into my CEREC world. So that's really, really important to understand that process. Eight out of 10 times, I'm prepping the teeth next door to optimize my draw. Just remember that. So based on that aspect, oh, one other point on that. As we go more toward the posterior component of the mouth, the proximal contact, the diameter becomes larger. Think of the distal of the upper first molar. That's a large contact. Now, see, in an average mouth, that may be four millimeters across and five millimeters high. Unless we optimize that surface next to that virtual design, we're not going to get those ideal interproximal contacts. So, back to contact firmness. Knowing the fact that we've idealized our contact next door, I want my restoration to drop in with just a little force that gives me latitude for finishing. My proximal contact strength for the blue cam is plus 2.5. That's solid green. But listen to this. That's with my traditional MCXL. Within the last few months, in my training center here, Patterson sponsored five brand new practice lab MCXLs. And guess what happened? The proximal contact color dimensions needed to change. Rather than solid green, I have to put a few speckles in there of light blue. So that means that green is slightly speckled with light blue. Those drop in. On all five of my MCXLs coming from 10 different computer systems. The other factor that can impact proximal contact strength is how we place our reflective medium. That's pretty customized. So a proximal contact strength recommendation is, is a place to start and it may vary for you. Also, depending on how you like to finish your proximal contacts, meaning do you like to polish them in? I've seen clinicians make this comment of where I like it a little firm so I can customize it in. That's cool. In my clinical theater, I like to just place them down and not have to customize them, but maybe just a little firm for some finishing. How you finish your proximal contact restoration would also depend on the firmness you want. As I've already mentioned, I like mine to pop down with just a little firmness, and that way I use a blue Meisinger well just to do a light polish on the contacts, and it's perfect. So my firmness color for blue cam is green or a little spotted green with my Practice Lab M6Ls. Now, if I use Omnicam, it's a totally different color system. With Omnicam, using the same milling units, I need to have light blue spotted on the dark blue. <laughs> That's light blue spotted on the dark blue. That's more like a negative 50, between negative 50 and negative 25. So, proximal contact strength, 
helps our day, helps the proposals. Think of how you place your reflective medium if you're still using blue cam. Also think of the way you like to finish them. That will impact on what number you're going to use. But somewhere around zero to plus two five for blue cam users is right on. And then right now for Omnicam users, it's negative 25 to negative 50. Thanks for watching.